So in this particular video, we'll be talking about sequential agents. So how you can take a particular task and divide it into series of agents or make it go through a series of agents. So this is something that we need to build. And this placement is basically called a sequential placement of agents. So I give it some set of instructions like you're the paragraph writer AI. So this is the first response. And if you see, it's quite elaborative. And basically this is the research agent spitting out facts. And do follow this playlist because we're gonna build amazing stuff using Google's ADK. What's up everybody, welcome back to another video within the Generative AI tool series. And in this video, we'll continue to talk about Google's ADK and how you can build agents out of it. So what we have covered in this playlist so far is how you can build a basic agent. And we have understood the ecosystem of ADK so far. And that's the very first video. I'm going to hook it up into the guards. Go ahead and watch it. We build a very basic form of a policy bot. And in the next video, which was the previous video. So in that video, we actually evolved that particular agent. And we talked about what LLM agents actually is so and what it basically offers so in this video we'll be talking about workflow agents and by workflow agents i mean there are multiple agents within the scene and how they interact with each other this is something that we're going to design in this particular tutorial so just a quick recap so uh for google adk these are all the workflow agents that we have sequential agents, loop agents, parallel agents. And I talk, I talked about it briefly in the previous video, like how these are like design patterns for the LLM agents. So in this particular video, we'll be talking about sequential agents. So how you can take a particular task and divide it into series of agents or make it go through a series of agents. For example, you have a task, you pass it through agent A. Agent A does its thing and passes it on to agent B. So that's something that we're going to design. So in basic form, let's just sketch it out. So we have a, what we're, what we are going to build is a research agent. So what I want to do, I want to start from here and let's take it over here. Whoa, you go here and this will be my starting point. And within the starting point, I will be sending in some text or query and the research agent what i want the research agent to do is to research about that particular query so what i'm going to do i'm going to assign a particular tool set to this particular research agent and this will be google search yes you can do that in uh you know google's adk since they have their own search so it's available as a built-in tool within google's adk so whenever this query arrives within the research agent it makes a call to google search and it you know extracts some details from the web and you know gives back to the research agent the tool basically next what i want to do i want to place another agent and I'm just going to call it paragraph agent. So this agent, what it does, it takes all the findings from, uh, you know, uh, the research agent. Let's place it over here. Let's say findings. I don't know. Paragraph agent is not the best creative thing, but it's what it is. So you get a query, you pass it to research agent, research agent, does its research, it gives all the findings to the paragraph agent and the paragraph agent eventually, you know, uh, shows the output in a very, you know, basic form, more like a summarized form. And we'll keep a cap to it, like maybe four or five lines. So this is something that we need to build. And this placement is basically called a sequential placement of agents. So let's go ahead into the code and get our hands dirty. All right, I'm in my code. Uh, let me just zoom this up for you guys. I hope this is better. All right, we start off from basic stuff. 
uh, I'm importing sequential agent and alongside I'm also importing LLM agent uh, from the gen AI package I'm importing the types I'm also fetching in the in-memory service so if you haven't seen the previous video the in-memory session service is something that the ADK uh, helps us or provides us and alongside helps us to keep track of our previous messages or user history so you don't have to rely on any third-party service, Redis, or anything else. You have this particular in-memory session service and you store all your stuff within it. You can even store your responses in it and we will be storing responses in this particular example. Then we have runner. This is more like an orchestrator for, you know, to orchestrate the agents. And then within the tools, there are a lot of built-in tools and I'll try to cover as much as I can within this playlist. But for now, I'm importing Google search, which will actually, you know, uh, help me attain this particular path, uh, this particular part. And then I'm importing the Gen AI package, which is a more like uh, <clears throat> a more like a wrapper package, which works with ADK as well. So all I have to do, I have to hook in my uh, Google API key, which is my Gemini API key, and I just have to call and configure, pass in my API key, and uh, Google's ADK would pick up this API key from this particular package. So I don't have to pass in anything explicitly to any constructor of, uh, you know, ADK. Then I have, you know, I give my application a name. You need a user ID and a session ID to actually instantiate a session. And you, I'm using Gemini 2.0 Flash for uh, this particular example. All right, this is the fun part. Uh, this is where we instantiate the researcher agent and I'm using LLM agent for this and nothing creative. I just name it research agent. Uh, I'm using Gemini model. Here are my set of instructions. So you're a research agent. You collect information from the web using Google search tool about a particular topic and output the information in a structured JSON format. And this is the format I wanted to pass to my second agent, which happens to be the paragraph agent. So I want these fightings to be uh, in this particular format. Also, one more thing, I didn't discuss this within the uh, within my last video, but here's another offering by LLM agent, uh, this thing here. So what it does, you can store, uh, you know, the response from one LLM agent within the in-memory session service by using this particular key. So if you want it to be saved, if you want to keep track of it, like we discussed, so you can do this explicitly by this particular thing. And you can use this output key within the description or the instructions for another agent. So that's the convenience. All right, so we then build our second LLM agent, which happens to be the paragrapher, uh, you know, paragraph writer agent. Uh, again, nothing creative over here. I pass in my Gemini model. I give it some set of instructions like you're the paragraph writer AI. You write a paragraph based on information provided in the session state under the key topic research items, which happens to be this here. So this is what I was referring to. You should write the paragraph and summarize the information in clear, concise manner. And then I add some, you know, uh, constraints like the paragraph should only be five sentences long. It should be in English, formal tone, free from grammatical error and easy to read, well structured. Then I have descriptions. And again, I specify the output key yet again. So my data would reside in the paragraph key within my session memory store. The next set of step is this is where I uh, instantiate my code pipeline and I'm using the uh, sequential agent for it. I name my pipeline and this is where the magic happens. This is where I state that, hey, uh, this is the sequence of agents uh, I want you to run through, uh, run the information through. Then a uh, pretty standard stuff. I instantiate my service uh, by using app name, user ID, session ID. I instantiate my runner instance. This is where I, uh, you know, send in my code pipeline. Again, to reference this, I send in my app name and obviously in to run it and to make sure that all the details of these agents are saved in their specific output key, you have to specify the session service. 
Now, this is the final thing. This is where you can call the agent. Uh, I'm just, you know, instantiating the content and I'm using the types uh, class for this, which I imported from the uh, Gen AI uh, package at the top, this here. All right. So then I uh, make sure that, you know, uh, the events are being instantiated. And again, no biggie over here user ID, session ID, and content. And then I just run through the events uh, and I make sure that, you know, when I get the flag of when a particular event is final, which means all my response has been generated and I just have to output it. All right, so for the final part, you call the agent and you pass in, uh, you know, a particular query. So yet again, just to recap, we pass in the query, it will research using the Google search tool Set in the findings in a formatted JSON format to the paragraph agent and, you know, gives us a summary. So this is how the task has been broken down. Let's go ahead and run this bad boy. All right, so I'm in my terminal. I'm going to type in Python. Uh, wait, this is sequential agents. So this is the first response. And if you see, it's quite elaborative. And basically, this is the research agent spitting out facts. So I have all set of details, very verbose, very detailed. And it's more like a summary of the start of Roman Kingdom, then the Roman Empire, and then the fall of the Roman Empire. And this here, as you can see, we have another agent response. This is my paragraph agent summarizing all of the details from the top. So uh, this set of all these set of details into a very brief paragraph. One, two, three, four, five, almost five lines. So uh, so the history of Roman extends from traditional founding in 753 BC to the fall of Western Roman Empire and initially a kingdom from uh 753 to 509 you get the you get the gist of it right so it has basically uh, summarized the whole thing so this is how the sequential agents work and this is how the architecture is laid out so imagine you know uh, we just use google search within a particular agent and just imagine the things you can build out of it imagine the power of this particular architecture and the things it can do and eventually these agents, when I said in the very first video, I know I must have ruffled some feathers when, when I said that most of the uh, CRUD architecture would be replaced while agents sit at the front of it. So this is what I mean. You know, imagine you're sending a, you know, request to the agents and they're figuring out everything. They're sitting in front of your databases. They're sitting in front of the web. They're sitting in front of and managing the whole thing for you, you know, like making reservations, fetching in some details. So, yeah, it's crazy times and interesting times to be alive. in. let me know what you thought of this video. Uh, do comment if you if you think I missed something and do follow this playlist because we're going to build amazing stuff using Google's ADK with agents. So I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.